Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Today, we're gonna, you know, really trying to get to the bottom of one of the most well-known, and let's be honest, kind of creepy UFO stories out there. The Hill Abduction, you've probably heard the name before, right? Missing Time, uh, those strange lights in the night, and of course the whole alien encounter thing. But why is it that this case from gosh, way back in 1961, still gets to people. It really is something, isn't it? I mean, yeah. even after all these years, the Hill abduction just taps into something primal. It's like this fear, but also this fascination with what we just don't understand. Totally. Okay, so let's rewind the clock. Imagine, it's 1961, the Cold War's got everyone on edge. Betty and Barney Hill, an interracial couple, just a regular couple, are driving home from a vacation. They're passing through the White Mountains up in New Hampshire. It's late. And then, boom, they see something strange up in the sky. I mean, talk about adding unsettling to your road trip, right? <laughs> you know, I think it's that ordinary people, extraordinary events thing that really pulls people in. Mm -hmm. It could happen to anyone, right? Yeah, right? The hills weren't out looking for UFOs. They were just trying to get home. And then, bam, this light appears. And it's not just a quick flash in the pan. This thing seems to be following them. Oh, man. Can you imagine that feeling of being watched, of something being off? It gives me chills just thinking about it. And, you know, they weren't the type to just jump to conclusions. But this light, it really shook them up. And to really get why they reacted the way they did, you got to think about the world back then. I mean, the space race was in full swing. People were terrified of the Soviets. UFO sightings were all over the news. It was this weird mix of like, are we alone? And oh God, what if we're not? Right. Like this huge curiosity, but also this fear of the unknown. And for the Hills, it wasn't just some light show, you know. What happened to them became a classic part of so many abduction stories. Missing time, hours, just gone, poof, vanished. Yeah, that gap in their memory where time just seems to disappear. That's a huge part of these stories, isn't it? Like, yeah. what if what we think we know about reality is wrong? Okay, seriously, that's terrifying. To think you could just lose time like that, your life becomes this puzzle you can't solve. And at first the Hills tried to ignore it. I mean, they weren't running around yelling aliens or anything, but then... The nightmare started for both of them. This anxiety, this feeling that something was very, very wrong. Like their minds were trying to tell them something, you know, mm. to process something they couldn't consciously deal with. This wasn't just some fleeting thing. It got under their skin and it wouldn't let go. And that's when things really took a turn. Because to try and figure out those missing hours, they reached out to a big time psychiatrist in Boston, Dr. Benjamin Simon. And this is where things get really interesting, right? Because Dr. Simon, he didn't just brush them off. He could tell something bigger was going on, something that regular therapy couldn't quite get at. So he decided to try something, well, let's just say it's controversial even today. It's called hypnotic regression. Yeah, hypnotic regression. It's this whole other world, you know? Yeah. I mean, the idea is to dig up those buried memories. But the thing is, critics, they'll say, it's all a bit iffy. Like, can you trust those memories? Right. Are they real? Or did the therapist or even the patient themselves kind of make them up? It's definitely a gray area, no doubt about it. And we got to keep that in mind as we go forward, because under hypnosis, both Betty and Barney, totally separately, they start remembering things about those lost hours and what they described. Whoa, boy, it blew the roof off the whole UFO scene. It's true. Under hypnosis, this super vivid, detailed story comes out and it's like, boom, the alien abduction story, you know, the, the blueprint, a huge disc shaped thing just hanging in the air. Silent as could be right there above their car, blowing lights, windows, even figures inside just watching them. OK, pause for a second. Put yourself in their position. You're under. Try and make sense of a night you can't remember. And bam, this image hits you like mm. classic UFO stuff right out of the movies. But it's not just any old spaceship they're talking about, is it? No way. This goes way beyond your average flying saucer. These figures they described, yeah, they're humanoid-ish, but smaller. With these big old heads and these piercing black eyes. Not exactly those little green guys everyone jokes about. This is something different, something else. They even said these beings were wearing these outfits, like simple ones, almost like uniforms. Kind of military looking, if you can believe it. It's those little things, you know, it's like whether you believe in aliens or not, those details uniforms, the heads, they make you stop and think. They make it feel real. Exactly. It's those really specific details, those sensory things that make these stories stick. Like they talk about this tingling feeling, pins and needles and these beeping sounds over and over again. Not just vague feelings, but real, you know, concrete stuff they could remember clearly. The tingling, the beeping, man, that would mess me up. So real, so creepy. But hold on tight because it gets even wilder. This is where it takes a really dark turn. 
both of them, they said they were taken inside the craft. Not by choice. This is it, right? The abduction. They're saying they're taken inside and basically given, like, medical exams. This is where it goes from, oh, that's a weird light, to I'm being examined by something I don't understand. Scary stuff. Medical exams, like what actually happened in there, according to them. Okay, so this is where it gets even more intense. And mm -hmm. honestly, where their stories don't quite match up, which is interesting, right? They both said they were separated, put on these tables. Betty, she remembered a thing, like a needle scraping her skin. Barney, he talked about them looking at his teeth, like really closely, just poked and prodded, you know, yeah. like lab rats. So many questions. Were they in pain? Could they talk to these things? Yeah. What was the point of it all? Right. And that's what's had people debating for years. Even under hypnosis, the details are fuzzy. Betty said she felt pressure, like it was uncomfortable, but not exactly painful. Barney, though, he makes it sound way more intense, like they were really going at him. So what's the deal? Is it just how memory works, especially after something that traumatic? Or was something else going on? It makes you wonder, you know, how trauma hits everyone differently, how it gets all tangled up in your mind. I mean, even if we say, okay, let's believe them, something really did happen, wouldn't those memories, after all that time, be kind of jumbled up, mixed with fear, with time itself? Of course. Our memories aren't perfect recordings, are they? More like we're always piecing them back together. Our yeah. emotions, what we see and hear, even just remembering itself, mm -hmm. it all gets thrown into the mix. So yeah, their stories don't perfectly line up. Does that mean it's all made up? Not necessarily. Just makes it even more complicated. You know, it's easy to get caught up in all the details, right? The spaceship, those beings, all that. But for me, what really sticks is that this is, at its core, a story about two people who went through something that, well, it changed them forever. They carried that, whatever it was, with them for the rest of their lives. It's true. You know, it's like the aftermath, the human side of this whole thing, that's what really gets to me. Yeah. And when you see how they dealt with the years that followed, man, it shows you how differently trauma can, like, mess with people. It's like their lives went in two totally different directions after this. Betty, she became, I don't know, obsessed with figuring it all out. It consumed her. Yeah, it really did. She went all in on UFO research. It wasn't enough to just, you know, have had the experience. You had to understand it to connect the dots, I guess. She even made these detailed star maps based on what she saw during the abduction, she said. Like, she was trying to, like, retrace their route, you know. Wow. The yeah. dedication to not only, like, live through that, but then to try and piece it back together. Literally map it out. It's like she needed to make sense of it no matter what. And get this, it didn't stop there. Ooh. Benny, she also started saying she had these, like, psychic abilities after the abduction. Vivid dreams, she said, that would predict things. Yeah. It's like, whatever happened, it opened up something in her. For good or bad, who knows? It just goes to show you, right, these experiences, even if we say, okay, maybe it wasn't aliens, they can still mess you up. Change how your mind works. And then there's Barney. Hmm. He was different. He kind of yeah. shut down, didn't he? He did. Betty, she was out there searching, talking about it. Barney, he kept it all inside. Insomnia, nightmares, the works. Just this heavy weight he carried around. Must have been awful. It's sad, you know. Sometimes the worst part of trauma is what you can't see, what people keep bottled up. And we can't forget, this was the 60s, right? Huge social changes happening, and here they are, an interracial couple telling the world about aliens, the skepticism they must have faced, the judgment. No doubt. They were already dealing with so much just existing in that time, and then to add this insane story on top of it, no wonder people didn't know what to believe. Some probably made fun of them, even. It makes you think about what's harder sometimes. Is it dealing with the unknown or dealing with other people? But here's the thing. Despite all that, their story, it didn't go away. The Hill abduction, it blew up. It became a whole media circus, didn't it? Right. Newspapers, magazines, they ate it up. The Hills were on a radio, even TV. Talk about your life being turned upside down. It's almost too much to imagine. Something so personal, so freaky, and the whole world's talking about it. And it wasn't just the media, right? The government got involved. Project Blue Book, they called it, an official investigation. Project Blue Book. That was the Air Force's way of trying to make heads or tails of all these UFO reports, right? Yeah. And sure, a lot of them they could explain away. Weather balloons, people seeing things, whatever. Mm -hmm. But some, like the Hill case, those they couldn't crack. No hard proof, but they couldn't just dismiss it either. So the mystery lives on. Even without that smoking gun, the Hill abduction, it left its mark. It's like the granddaddy of all those alien stories, books, movies, you name it. Whether it truly happened or not, it hit on something we all wonder about, I think. 
Totally. It makes you ask, what if? What if we don't know everything? What if there's stuff out there we can't even imagine? Exactly. And even if we say, okay, aliens, maybe not, the Hill case still makes you think about yeah. memory, about what we believe, about how we try to find meaning when things just don't make sense. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I'm curious, what gets to you the most about this story? The mystery, the memory stuff, how people treated the Hills, whatever it is, I hope this has made you want to keep asking questions, you know, keep digging, keep looking up at the stars and wondering. Thanks for listening, everybody.